Every year at the end of February, I head down to Homer, Alaska for a chance to find one of my favorite subjects to photograph, baby sea otters. Anchorage and Homer are only 100 miles apart as a crow flies, but due to the Kook Inlet separating the two cities, it takes about five hours to make a 250 mile trip, but it's an amazing drive. My plan was to spend three days in Homer looking for these sea otters and their pups and show my mother around Homer in its winter plumages. She'd just come up for a few weeks for the Fur Rendezvous Festival. We started the drive down the Turnigan Arm early in the morning and were rewarded with a gorgeous sunrise along the Chugach Mountains while the moon was still trying to set. We made our way through Turnigan Pass, through Cooper Landing, we made a stop briefly near Soldotna to watch some bald eagles who had read out volcano framed behind them. Made for a fun quick snap. From here we made our way to the village of Nelchik. Had lunch and visited the small Russian village with a beautiful church and amazing beach. There were some eagles feasting on some halibut scraps, and of course I had to get some photos and videos. I never get tired of eagles. And the view across the inlet was just amazing. Such a clear day where we could see both Redoubt and Iliama volcanoes. From here it was just a 45 minute drive to the Homer Spit where we are going to spend the next three days. As we got just close to Homer, we had an amazing view once again of the volcanoes on the other side of the inlet. We got checked in our room and then I checked a few hot spots to check on the otters and other shorebirds and ducks that frequent the spit in the docks. I spotted a few solo otters swimming around and some gulls that were resting on the boardwalk. I managed to get a couple nice mountain frame shots with the gulls and a sleepy otter in the setting sunlight. After this, it was time to call it a night and see what we could find the next day. But before we could go to sleep, I noticed something out the bay window in our room. The aurora. I didn't get any great images or videos as everything I had brought with me was wildlife centered, but I did get a couple pictures with the R7 and the RF 14-35 f4 lens and the iPhone 14. It was the first time my mother had seen the aurora and I was just fascinated to watch it as it was an incredible show with lights from horizon to horizon. We didn't know which way to look. It was amazing and we didn't make it back to the room until well after 5 a.m. So needless to say, I didn't get out as early as I wanted to in the next day. Which wasn't too much of a bad thing as this day was very windy and pretty bitterly cold. Not much was milling around as far as baby otters on this day either. But I did find a couple otters eating clams along the docks that were really close and the F-mount 200-500 mount lens came in super handy as I was shooting from ranges from 200 to 300 millimeters and I had to try to walk back some to get them in the frame. I was shooting the Nikon Z9 of course this day to be able to shoot in the 2 to 500 lens and as always it performed outstandingly. Not much more presented itself and it was just as well as the wind was up and it was just a tad bit chilly. As evening came on and we were about to wrap it up for the day, we ran into a friend and fellow photographer in Homer, Sergis Hannon. He was out looking for owls. He also has a YouTube channel and I'll link it in the description of the video. Definitely go check him out. 
As we were talking to Serge, we saw one of our favorite subjects to see, the great gray owl, the Phantom of the North. Serge was definitely in the right place. And of course, the owl was sitting on a fence line as they love to do, but I took the shot regardless, if nothing else, because they're just so majestic. After a bit, he flew over and landed extremely close to us. And just up a bit later, he dropped off the fence and flew right over our heads. I mean close. Made us all kind of duck. It was a bit funny. What a great end to our evening. When I got up around for the third day, the weather was much more agreeable. Low winds and just some scattered clouds. The morning surge was a little sparse. Sang single otters and a couple of moms and some older pups, maybe two to three months old. Of course, I'm looking for the recent born pups. Sea otters can mate at any time of the year, but in Alaska, most pups are born in the spring. And usually in Homer, I find the pups to be born at the end of February and the beginning of March. But this year is finding pups that were born in January, it looked like. And these pups were skittish. I would see mom and she wouldn't care, but as soon as the pup spotted me, Boom, he was gone with a splash. As we're about to go find some lunch, I spotted an amazing raptor, a short-eared owl. It was a brief encounter and he ended up flying out across the bay and I lost sight of him. Not a great photo opportunity, but exciting to see them nonetheless. So that afternoon I sat on the docks and I knew this would probably be my last opportunity to really find one of these just-born pups. I listened for the telltale cry of a newborn as mom searches for food, but no cries were happening anywhere I walked. I ran across a few more older pups, and my luck was the same with these pups. As soon as I was spotted, the pup dove, and they ended up much farther, farther away. As I was walking to the far end of the harbor, I heard a cry. Well, I thought I heard a cry, as I couldn't pinpoint where it was coming from, and even if it was just my ears playing tricks on me, I, I didn't know. It happened a couple more times, and then... I heard the squeal much louder, and sure enough, there they were. A newborn pup, looked just a few days old, talk about super elated. The newborn pups are pretty much just a cork though, all they do is float around and don't swim too well, and when they do swim, it's kind of a side stroke when they try to swim back to their mom. The mom seemed to tolerate my presence for a bit, and then she gathered the little tyke up and started slowly head to the middle of the harbor. I knew where they were going to go and where they would pop out from behind the boats, and it was in a clearing. And sure enough, when I moved to that area, they came popping out of the clearing and some great reflections from the boats on the water. The boat's paint jobs make the water get some cool greens, blues, orange, and red colors. It's really neat. This is always so much fun watching mom and pup interact. There's even a sleeping otter just floating around near the pair. Otters always look so much cuter when they're dry and all fluffy, but in this scenario that I was experiencing here in the docks this day, everybody was wet and not too fluffy, but they're still amazing and fun to capture. Mom wasn't diving for clams or feeding or anything. She, rather, she just cleaned the pup and letting him nurse the whole time. It's so much fun to watch. Getting the shots of the otters in the water is a bit challenging. The first challenge is trying to get low in the water, which means either laying or sitting on the docks with either falling into the bay or not laying too much in otter poop. There is so much otter poop on the docks in winter. Luckily, their poop is mostly seashells and seaweed and dries out super fast. Not real messy, luckily. I'm sure that's more than you ever wanted to know about otter poop. 
The other challenge was the light and the exposure. You don't need a super high shutter speed, but something around 1 1,000th is preferred. Probably the aperture about 5.6 to 8 is good to get the full head of the otter, and sometimes F11 to get both otter heads if they're pretty close to each other. But the challenge is not blowing out the highlights, as the otter is dark and the wet fur and the midday sun makes it hard not to kill the darks or the whites. You may have to make a decision which way you want to risk it, and the water reflections just add to those woes. Challenging, but still fun. As mom and pup slowly made their way to the other side of the harbor and started to get small in the frame, I heard a huff in the water somewhere behind me, and I knew exactly what that sound was. Harbor seal. And yes, sure enough, there he was, right behind me. A fishing charter boat had come in a few minutes earlier and tied up in a slip down the docks from me. And I saw two harbor seals surfacing the water around the boats, probably looking for a snack. As I took a couple of shots of them started to call it a day and walked past the boat, I spotted two more dark shapes pop up from underneath the water. It was a mom and a two month old pup. You can tell the two to four month old pups as they're pretty black and definitely from the size of them. Mom had a tanner crab shell and was letting the pup take some of the meat. Lucky for me, the charter had waited to clean the tanner crabs they'd caught in the docks instead of out in the bay and had tossed the carcasses off into the water. So the mom otter would go down and grab one to three shells of the crabs and come back up and let the pup take one while she ate the rest. For the first time, the pup didn't care about me. He was having too much fun having a snow crab feast. Couldn't blame him. So I took the opportunity to snap off as many pictures as I could and get water video I could. And to top it off, the boat on the opposite side had some great green and red colors that were cascading through the water. After all, I think they had exhausted all the crab parts between the otters and the seals, and a third otter came and played and wrestled with mom and the pup. And then they started swimming back to the middle of the harbor again. And by now, I'm super happy with the shots I'd get in the video I'd captured, and I had some pretty cold hands. I've been out on the slips for several hours. So we went back to the room and got cleaned up and went out for a good steak dinner and called it a night. This whole encounter just drove home the lesson of don't give up and how perseverance will pay off if you put in the work. This last day just made the whole trip a success.
The next day was reserved for the trip back to Anchorage, as all is well because it was snowing pretty heavily and not a real good day for photography. We grabbed some breakfast and started head out of Homer. As we're almost off the spit and about to head into town, I spotted something off the road sitting on some large driftwood. It was that short-eared owl again. My favorite all-time owl and one I try my hardest to find. I flipped around and saw if I could get any shots of this gorgeous raptor sitting on this piece of driftwood. The snow was too heavy for any decent shots, and after a few minutes, it started to hunt. I watched it for a bit as it slowly faded away into the falling snow, and I didn't see it again. And that encounter laid the seed of my next project, and it also set into motion the sole focus of my next two weeks. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you are enjoying the channel, do all those YouTube things. Share, subscribe, like, etc. If you want to help out the channel, watch the videos at the end and think about becoming a member of the channel, which just helps us out to be able to do these type of adventures, especially the episode coming up on our return trip to Homer for a week-long pursuit. And again, I want to thank Serge for alerting me the gray gray owl that was nearby that day. Until next time, everyone stay safe and go run that shutter.